Horrible Harry in the Dungeon, Chapter 4. Harry Goes to the Dungeon. The next morning, Harry was not himself. He came into room 2B, sat down, and folded his hands. He never does that. Are you okay? I asked. Harry nodded. Then it came to me. Harry wanted Miss Mackle to change her mind about sending him to the dungeon. I looked around the room. Song Lee wasn't there yet. I wondered if she was going to be absent. Miss Mackle looked at the carnations on her desk. Who brought these? Harry raised his hand. I did. They're for the butterflies. They need pollen. Then he flashed a toothy smile. It was Harry's way of saying he was sorry about yesterday. Miss Mackle smiled back. How thoughtful. Thank you, Harry. Everyone watched Miss Mackle snap the heads off the three carnations and place them on the floor of the butterfly cage. Two painted ladies landed on them right away. We watched them sniff the petals. A minute later, when Mr. Skoughammer appeared at the doorway, the entire class turned to look. Man, he's weird, Dexter whispered behind me. Some other kids whispered about the earring in, the, in his eyebrow. I noticed his SOS pad hairdo. Then I noticed Harry. His folded hands looked like an air drill hammering on his desk. Are you afraid? I asked. Harry shot me a look. Me? Afraid? Come on. Then he whispered, make that five minutes in the dungeon. Tell the teacher at 9.05. I looked at the clock. It was 8.58. Okay, Harry, I whispered back. It would be easier to tell on Song Lee if she wasn't there. Boys and girls, Miss Mackle said. This is Mr. Kookhammer. Skoughammer, he corrected. Everyone laughed except Harry. Miss Mackle continued. Mr. Skoughammer will unfortunately be taking Harry down to the suspension room for the whole day. I look forward to seeing Harry tomorrow when he will have a better attitude. Mary folded her arms. I knew Harry would be the first one to go from our room. Mr. Skoughammer pulled on his red beard as he waited at the door. He didn't have his black bag with him. It was probably in the dungeon. Harry got up. He walked down the aisle like he was walking to his execution. Slowly. Carefully. Miss Mackle handed him a pile of work. I expect this to be done by three, Harry. Harry raised his head as if to say yes like a tough guy. Then he dropped the books and papers. Ida got out of her seat and helped him pick them up. Finally, Harry was at the doorway with his stuff. He was about two feet shorter than Skoughammer. When Harry turned and gave me one last look, he held up five fingers. I felt so bad. My buddy was innocent. He was going to the dungeon for a crime he didn't do. And for what? A big black bag that bulged? I don't think Harry cared about it anymore.